Part A then we're asked to consider the reaction of um, salicylic acid with hot propantool in the presence of concentrated sulfuric acid. So we've got to consider both the functional groups. We've got a carboxylic acid group and we've got a phenol and we've got to consider whether either or both of them would react. So phenols, there is no such reaction. There is no reaction of phenols with alcohols that we know about. So that's just going to stay the same. But of course, carboxylic acids with alcohols, yeah, that's esterification. And the conch sulfuric acid catalyst confirms that because you know that that's the, the correct catalyst for esterification. So it's just this group that's going to react. And remember the recipe for um, esterification. So there's our propan tool. The recipe says that the two OH groups condense together. So we're going to lose uh, water by condensing it out like that and join together the two bits that are left. So that's what we've got on the left hand side. That plus that will give you, make sure you copy the rest of the molecule faithfully. So we've still got the phenol group intact. And then instead of the OH, it's now going to link to this oxygen from the propan tool. And don't forget, because it asked for an equation, we have to put the water in as well, which is what we've condensed out. So that's the other product. So that plus H2O. The second one, it asks us for what happens with aqueous sodium hydroxide. So again, we've got this. And again, we have to look at both functional groups and say, Will they react with sodium hydroxide? Well, of course, carboxylic acid will. Acid plus alcohol goes to salt plus water, so we know that is. But you have to remember that phenols are also weakly acidic, and so they can also react in the same kind of way, just as an acid-base reaction with sodium hydroxide. So we're going to need two moles of sodium hydroxide. Okay, one for the phenol, one for the carboxylic acid, and you simply form the salt. Okay, so remember when you form a salt, you just replace the H plus with the metal ion. So we're going to get O minus Na plus for the sodium salt there, and the same for the sodium salt here. And each one of those produces a water, so two waters. Okay, so the key to that was first of all recognizing, gave you a hint in the question to consider that uh, there may be excess of the. Did it say that actually? Yeah, that there may be excess of the reagent. So you might have expected at least one of these for it to react more than once. And um, it's just imperative to remember about this acidity of phenol groups. It's different from alcohols. Alcohols are not acidic. So the third one wants us now to um, consider what happens if we add potassium carbonate. So again, we've got this. So this you have to know that carbonates, of course, are bases. So again, we would expect them to react with acids. Acid plus carbonate goes to salt plus carbon dioxide plus water. You hopefully know those patterns. And the carboxylic acid will do exactly that. But what you have to know is that phenols are too weakly acidic. They do not react with carbonates. And that's the sort of famous distinction between the two types of organic acid that you meet. Both these types of groups are acidic, but only that one is acidic enough to react with the carbonate. So make sure you get the formula of potassium carbonate right. If you put KCO3, it means you're not pausing to think about the charges on the ions. You must always, always do that. And so the product you're going to get is, that again, you're going to get the salt of the carboxylic acid, this time the potassium salt. So K plus replaces the H plus in the same way, but the phenol will be unaffected because it's not acidic enough to react. And water and CO2 are the other products. Now that isn't balanced this time because you can see that we had two K plus ions there. So we're therefore going to need two of these to balance that up. And that in turn means that we need two of those. Okay, so just because it's an organic reaction, doesn't mean it doesn't have to be balanced. Okay, so, so you just balance in the normal way. So those are those first three 
reactions. So the next question opens by asking us how to convert butanoic acid, which is that into butanoyl chloride, which they've given us the formula of. As with so much of organic chemistry, you just have to know the answer to that. You can't make it up. Um, the reagent that does that is thionyl chloride. You don't really need to know the name, but you need to know the formula. SOCl2 is um, the reagent. And to balance that equation, you've got to deal with the um, OH group, which is gone, and also one of the chlorines. And, and you do that by making SO2 and HCl, and then that balances everything up. Um, most commonly, you just need to know the reagent. We're getting you to practice the equations here because they do sometimes ask you for those, but actually the priority is, kn is knowing the reagents that do these transformations. So that's the first one. And then it wants the reaction of butanoyl chloride with cyclopentanol. So here's our butanoyl chloride again. Um, and remember, what always happens with acyl chlorides is that they readily lose this as Cl- and it gets replaced with whatever. So if it's an alcohol, which is wh what we've got here, cyclopentanol, it's that. Five-membered ring is the cyclopentane, and there's the OH. And again, it's just a, um, a uh, condensation reaction. This time we're going to condense out not water, but HCl, because that's what acyl chlorides do. So those condense out to make HCl, and then we just join the fragments together. So this is, remember, the, one of the alternative ways to make esters, rather than using the carboxylic acid, which gives you reversible reaction that needs concentrated acid catalyst. This one just goes all on its own at room temperature, no catalyst needed. So there's the ester joined up. And again, the other product this time is HCl. So that's that reaction. Part C asks why if you do that, you have to do it in the absence of water. And the answer, of course, is that that butanoyl chloride is incredibly reactive. And if you have water present, um, you just get a condensation with the water, which forms um, butanoic acid plus HCl. OK, so that's hydrolysis of the um, acyl chloride and that happens incredibly quickly and vigorously so um, you wouldn't succeed in making the ester because you would immediately destroy the butanoyl chloride by reaction with the water okay so that's your answer because the butanoyl chloride is rapidly hydrolyzed is the the key word um, for that sort of reaction you don't need the equation but it would be a way of answering the question part d you need to recognize this is a friedel crafts reaction um, so this was one of the key reactions we studied when we did aromatic chemistry earlier in the year. So remember again, it's just a substitution in effect that the chlorine gets booted out and replaced, in this case, with a benzene ring. And the reaction is simply that. It's just that with benzene. Um, and that will give you the product, just the benzene ring substituting for the chlorine. And if you think about it, that will give you HCl as the other product, because you've got to lose a hydrogen from the ring so that it can be connected up to the carbon there. And that combines with the chlorine there to give you HCl. So that's your reaction. And you need a halogen carrier catalyst. Don't just say halogen carrier. You need to nominate a specific one. So aluminium chloride would normally be the choice. Um, and that's your catalyst for that reaction. So you don't need the name in your answer, but it's worth remembering it because that will enable you to look it up if you hadn't remembered that. So that's Friedel-Crafts reaction.